The automobile industry that we know today is one of the largest industries in the world, not just by size, but also by revenue. Just a little over a century ago, this thriving industry was almost non-existent. Horse-drawn vehicles were the order of the day, and the few motor vehicles that existed were available only to the rich. One man who played a large role in making this industry what it is today is Henry Ford. Henry went from being a regular farm boy to starting a movement that transformed not just the global automobile industry, but also the economy of the United States. This is the story of Ford. Welcome to Planet Biz. The Pocket Watch, where it all began. Henry Ford was born on the 30th of July, 1863, on his family's farm in Springwells Township, Michigan. Ford attended school until he was 15 years old, but wasn't a very good student. He didn't really learn to speak or read well. Like most other children of his day that were born into farming families, Ford was required to work on the farm. As the eldest son, his father even expected him to take control of the farm someday. However, Ford had other plans. He wasn't the least bit interested in farm work. The ambitions of this young boy lay elsewhere. It all started with a gift from his father, a pocket watch. Henry was given this gift when he was 13 years old. Ford dismantled and reassembled this pocket watch several times. Eventually, he started repairing timepieces for friends and neighbors until he gained himself a reputation as the watch repairman. This watch fueled Henry Ford's curiosity and love for machinery. To fuel this love some more, around the time he was given a pocket watch, Henry also got the opportunity to witness the operation of a Nichols and Shepard road engine. According to Ford, this vehicle was the first other than horse drawn that I had ever seen. Unfortunately, Henry Ford's mother died in 1876. Ford was devastated. However, her death made it easier for him to leave the family farm and follow his passion for machines. He would later say, I never had any particular love for the farm. It was the mother on the farm I loved. And in 1879, Ford finally left the family farm, but it wasn't for good. Leaving home. In 1879, at the age of 16, Ford walked all the way to Detroit, Michigan to find work in its machine shops. He worked as a machinist apprentice at two shops at different points in time. The first shop where he worked was James F. Flowers and Bros, and later on, he worked for the Detroit Dry Dock Company. During this time as an apprentice, Henry was getting paid $2.50 a week. However, this wasn't enough to cover the expenses because room and board cost $3.50. To make the extra money he needed, Henry worked nights repairing people's clocks and watches. It was during his apprenticeship that Ford came in contact with internal combustion engines for the first time of his life. After three years, Henry returned home to work on his father's farm. Fortunately for him, his time here wasn't a complete waste to his machine-loving self. While on the farm, he became familiar with the Westinghouse portable steam engine. He learned to skillfully operate and service this engine while also studying bookkeeping in college. Later on, he was hired by the Westinghouse Engine Company to service their steam engines. Ford also set up a little machine shop where he would tinker during his spare time. One other benefit of Ford's time on the farm is that it was there he won his bride, Clara Bryan. She had grown up on another farm, not too far from the one that belonged to the Ford family. Thankfully, Ford finally left work on the family farm behind. He moved with his wife to Detroit, and for good this time. The Failed Attempts While in Detroit, Henry Ford worked as an engineer at the Detroit Edison Company. In 1893, two wonderful events occurred. In November, his wife gave birth to their only child, a son who they named Edsel Bryant Ford. A month after the birth of his son, Ford received a promotion at work. He was made chief engineer at the company, and his job was to maintain 24 hours of electric service per day in the city. Because he was always on call and had no regular hours, this job gave him more free time as well as money to experiment and tinker in his machine workshop. He was working on a project, an automobile with an internal combustion engine. By 1896, he was done building his project. 
It was a small car mounted on bicycle wheels and without a reverse gear. He named it the Ford Quadricycle. At 500 pounds, his car was by far the lightest American vehicle during its day. The same year he had completed his quadricycle, Ford attended a meeting of Edison executives where he met Thomas Edison. Edison approved of Ford's experimentation in car building. The two quickly became close friends. With Edison's support and encouragement, Henry Ford began work on a second vehicle, which he completed in 1898. However, the Edison Illuminating Company of Detroit, where Ford worked, wasn't too happy about his experimentations. They gave him an ultimatum. Either he stopped building cars, or he would lose his job. Ford chose cars. With the financial backing of William H. Murphy, a lumber baron from Detroit, he left his job and founded the Detroit Automobile Company in 1899. However, Ford soon left the company because the automobiles were of a lower quality than Ford wanted, and they were being sold for a higher price. The company ended up unsuccessful. It completely dissolved in January 1901. Ford made another attempt at forming an automobile company. With some of the same backers from the previous one, which had just crashed, he started the Ford Motor Company in November 1901, the same year that their previous company had failed. Ford occupied the role of chief engineer. And again, he left this company as well when they brought in a consultant named Henry Leland, who was also a machinist and an inventor. When Henry left, Leland renamed the company and turned it into Cadillac Automobile Company which was going to produce the famous Cadillacs. All Henry Ford's attempts at starting an automobile business that would cater to the needs of the masses had turned out futile. But he wasn't going to give up. He started yet another automobile company, which seemed to have a bright future. But again, things started going really wrong. A Financial Crisis Ford had a goal that contradicted popular opinion. He wanted to produce cars that were affordable by the public, up until then, cars were seen as a luxury item, something that could be acquired only by the wealthy. But Ford thought otherwise, and he was determined to prove himself right by making cars available at an affordable rate. Partnering with an old acquaintance named Alexander Malcolmson, who was a Detroit coal dealer, Ford formed the Ford & Malcolmson LTD, an automobile manufacturing company. The company was later incorporated in June 1903 as the Ford Motor Company. However, the two had a problem before they even really started. They were low on capital. They had just about $28,000, most of which was supplied by Malcolmson. The duo went ahead to start production. They leased a factory and contracted a machine shop owned by John and Horace Dodge to supply parts worth over $160,000. Starting out, sales of their cars were slow and their financial situation was quickly escalating into a crisis. The Dodge brothers who had supplied the machine parts began to demand their payment. To deal with this, Malcolmson brought more investors on board. He also managed to convince the Dodge brothers to take some shares of the company as payments. It worked. With about six investors, including the Dodge brothers, Ford designed a new car and displayed it on the ice of Lake St. Clair. The car reached a speed of 91.3 miles per hour, setting a new land speed record. The success drew the attention of Barney Oldfield, a pioneer race driver. He named the Ford Model 999 and took it around the United States, creating publicity for Ford Motors across the country. Success at last. The company was experiencing a lot of success, but there was another problem that they had to face. The Association of Licensed Automobile Manufacturers threatened to put Ford Motors out of business because Ford was not a licensed automobile manufacturer. He was denied a license by the group which wanted to reserve the profits of the booming automobile industry for itself. The basis of their power was a patent, which they claimed applied to all gasoline-powered automobiles. Ford thought this was ridiculous, and even though his company was still tiny, he initiated a legal battle, setting himself up against a million-dollar industry. Ford lost the original case in 1909, but he didn't give up. He appealed, and the case went to court once more. This time he won. His victory played a huge role in making the automobile industry the free market that it is today. In 1908, Ford introduced the Model T. I will build a motor car for the great multitude, was what he said, announcing the birth of this new car. The Model T, nicknamed Tin Lizzie, was invaluable in introducing the motor age. Today, cars aren't exclusively a luxury for the rich, and for this, we have Ford and his introduction of the Model T to thank. 
In 19 years, Ford sold over 17 million Model Ts around the world, bringing about a rapid change in the lives of average people. But first, he was going to invent a production technique that has become industry standard today. Transforming the industry. Ford was not only an inventor, he was an innovator. He developed the assembly line technique for building his cars. This technique slashed the time it took to produce a car. It was thanks to this technique that Ford Motors was able to produce as many Model Ts as it did during that period. In addition, Ford shocked the entire world by increasing the wages of all his workers to a minimum of $5 per day. This would have been about $130 today. It was more than double the wages that similar companies were paying their staff. This news brought Ford into the eye of the public, some praising him highly while others thought he was crazy. However, Ford's innovative way of thinking proved profitable. It brought the best, most experienced talents to his company, reducing turnover rate and training costs, increasing efficiency and reducing the number of people that they had to hire. This in turn boosted the American economy. Other companies were forced to increase their wages or lose their best workers. Employees could afford the cars that they were producing. Ford also made his cars more and more affordable. He didn't think that lowering the cost would lose money. Rather, he believed that the more people could afford his cars, the better for business. And he was right. When Ford left his hometown for Detroit, only two out of eight Americans lived in cities. At the time of his death, at the age of 83, the number had increased to five out of eight, and him and his Model T had a large role to play in that transformation. Today, Ford Motors is still standing strong, raking in billions of dollars in sales annually. For more inspiring business stories, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. This is Planet Biz.